let's shape some boards. Sweet. What would you call yourself? Surfboard builder, mad scientist. Do I have to pick one? Or just ultimate psyker. I'm a stoke broker. There you go. I met Ryan when I was probably 12 years old at Old Porto, and I would just come into your shop as a kid and just literally watch you shape. You were teaching me things, you were exposing me to the surf industry, where I could like watch you do your thing and like try and implement that into like how I'd be creative in my own world too. I am born and raised in Portland, Oregon. I'm from the Pacific Northwest. I like to say I spent 20 some odd years getting soggy and moved to SoCal to dry out, <laughs> uh, roughly right out of school. Early on in my life, I knew what I was on this planet to do. I knew I was gonna be a designer. I'm an artist, I was born this way. I was blessed with a gift. I did not grow up surfing, and when I moved to California, I immediately fell in love with it. I'm big. I immediately start just destroying all my boards. So then I start doing repairs. And a buddy was like, dude, you gotta buy a blank. You should just try shaping. So I bought a blank and I was immediately immersed in shaping. I didn't know if this was a hobby, if this was gonna be a career. And then I, I started getting enough clients. My shapes improved. I started shaping like any other shaper, traditional materials. Every material was petroleum based. And I was like, well, this kind of sucks. This isn't sustainable. So you swap one of those out and make it bio-based, that's huge. But the holy grail for me was to reduce my waste output as much as possible, to really reduce my carbon footprint. So I kind of just went through a case-by-case -case basis and figured out what my waste streams are and how I can reduce here, here, here. Figured out I could shred my waste if it was coated with resin. And that's how we got this zero waste system and the initiative going. And then upcycling that waste into sustainable lifestyle products. So you broke your neck surfing. Yeah, it was one of those, it was the first big winter swell and basically got scorpion, tried to go through the back and I over rotated and got slammed, became one with the bottom and smashed my neck. I punctured the vertebral artery on the right side of my body in three spots because I broke my C5, 6, and 7. They didn't even try to do surgery because it was so like touch and go and so gnarly and my body was already starting to fix itself. How did that change your perspective on your surf career moving forward as a shaper, yeah. as a lover of the ocean? When I broke my neck, it gave me more drive. It made me hungrier because something was taken away from me. I couldn't build boards. I could barely even wipe my own butt. Right? And so I started being more responsible with my time and applied more of my time to my craft. I basically needed for that to happen in my life, to get that drive, to get that hunger, to start reaching out to people. We started working with the number one and two surfboard labels on the planet and it immediately validated the EcoBoard movement. I feel like in life, everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. and that's what changes you mm -hmm. for the better and in doing so can change the people around you or affect the industry as a whole. Life is crazy. You only live once, you gotta live it to the fullest and you gotta make the impact while you can. What is the legacy that you're trying to leave behind with you know, your craft? I really care more about really what this industry has done to our planet. It has to stop. So my legacy has got to be this eco board movement. Why is this still the only place that is shredding up waste? What I'm proving now is we need to use our trash, right? And right now I'm, I'm starting to prove we can make boards stronger using plastic trash. It's a little bit more labor, but we're seeing consumers will pay more for stuff that is better for the environment. When people get that, when I see that connection, I love it. I never would have thought that first day we met at El Porto that like our relationship would have grown to what it's become now. Mm -hmm. and to see you change the surf industry, influence me, influence everyone that you, you know, have shaped boards for. The way you've grown has really inspired me. And that's also been really rewarding for me. I've seen you grow up, I've seen you blossom, I've seen you basically get to do what you love for a living. So it's, it's pretty cool. And we continue to work together closely. What does it mean for you to like see people riding your craft and like 
pass on that joy to people. I love it. I'm a stoked broker. The best surf in the water is the one having the most fun. So if I can make something that allows that person to have more fun, catch more waves, it's pretty rewarding to me and I love it. And it's one of the reasons I keep going, keep pushing, keep inventing new shapes uh, that are ultimately gonna stoke people out and help them do what they love.